take a seat and we'll make a start. Be great. Well, it certainly feels like summer has arrived, isn't it? Um, and uh, nice to see everyone starting to get out and about. Certainly, following all the, the lockdowns, I think we can all agree that it's a real blessing that we can meet every week and sort of treasure these moments, whereas before perhaps uh, it was taken as something that we could um, almost count on every week, whereas, whereas now we get through every week and, and hope that we don't need to go back into lockdown. <laughs> but um, look, it, it's great, isn't it? Um, and we're all privileged here in, here in New Zealand to be able um, to have that freedom. Um, family and I went out to the night markets for the first time in a long time and it was great to see so many people out and about um, and supporting the locals as well, um, enjoying food and, and time with friends and I hope uh, everyone here has um, made some plans to, to relax and enjoy the long weekend as well. Okay, let us let's pray. Father God, thank you so much that we can meet here in person, enjoy each other's company, and enjoy your company together. Um, that we can sing songs of praise and worship and um, really lift your name on high. We pray God, as, as we spend this time together this morning, um, that you would really speak to us, um, encourage us, help us to be better witnesses. Um, of you and all that you have done for us. We just uh, pray for this time again that we have together, uh, that your word would speak to us. In Jesus' name. Amen. I'd like to invite Natalie the music team up to lead us in the song. Good morning everyone, so let's, let's stand, um, leave our cares and worries at the door behind us and um, just focus on our Lord and Saviour. Thank you. 
produce a new song now. <laughs> it's called Waymaker, you probably would have heard it. Um, it's, um, it's a really beautiful song and it just kind of um, ferments the fact that he is uh, omnipresent, he is always here with us, um, whether we realise this or not. Um, our, our Father in Heaven, um, he will never leave us or, or forsake us and and um, it's just a great reinforcement of that. So um, when you can hang a bit, just sing along.
Heavenly Father, we thank you now, Lord, that you are the way maker, you are the miracle worker, the promise keeper, and the light in the darkness. Thank you, Lord, that you never leave us. Thank you, Lord, that even when we don't see it or feel it, you're here, you're and you're working within us. You're comforting us. You're guiding us. And Lord, we just love to sing praises to your name. And Lord, I thank you that we can gather together as your children with you, our Father. And that we can help join together and support and encourage each other. And Lord, I just pray for more of you. That you help us to feel your presence in our lives. We just pray for more of you in the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name.
Father God, we bring this offering to you, Lord. Uh, we thank you for all um, that you give us, both in time and resources and um, friendship and, and fellowship with others. Um, we give this to you for your kingdom um, and for the spread of the gospel, Lord. And we thank you for all those that have given freely this morning. Lord, we want to pray for others as well, and we, we pray for the, the new government and, and for wisdom for them as they plan out their next term um, and leadership board and as they continue to navigate through all the things that, um, all the events and things that life throws at us as well. Um, just them to you, Lord, we pray that uh, you would help them to be wise in their, um, in their plans and their leadership. Uh, we pray for the sale of uh, this building, Lord, and I commit that to you as well. And, um, just pray that the ongoing uh, due diligence goes smoothly. And pray for... Um, Everyone in New Zealand celebrating um, a long weekend uh, this weekend and we pray for that safety uh, but also for that opportunity to share life with, with one another, um, to celebrate life that is with His name we pray. Um, Uh, now time for the children to go to Sunday school and as they do let's take the, uh, the moment to greet someone around you and then we'll have the Bible reading and sermon. Hi everyone, Whoa. good to see you, how are we? Are enjoying this long weekend? Um, it's nice isn't it to be able to have a, uh, 
uh, a Labor weekend, which is warm weather. It's so warm. Um, most of us are probably here because we haven't gone away, but maybe you've done some enjoying of the, of the time. Uh, Rachel and I took uh, my mum down to Hamilton Gardens yesterday, and uh, very nice down there. There are now 16 distinct garden areas, like the Chinese and the Japanese and the modern and the, and the Renaissance and so on, and uh, there are some new ones I hadn't seen before, like the Mansfield Garden, which is this gorgeous um, turn of the century, turn of the previous century, uh, uh, large villa, sort of as Catherine Mansfield might describe, and there's a garden party all set up with fake food on the, on the tennis court, and there's a piano and double bass and all that set up, and there's a gorgeous uh, Model T Ford or something like that, a replica, just wonderful, and there's a surrealist garden which you go in and there's these giant weird um, tree things which are basically these shapes and they've covered them in ivy, and there's a, at the far end of the uh, field there's a there's a like a gate you would have in any um, any garden, but instead of being a normal size gate, it's massive and the edge is huge and everything's big, so you realise you're like a miniature person in this giant world. So really, really worthwhile. So there's your plug for Hamilton Gardens. Um, if you haven't been for a while, and uh, they've got 16 distinct gardens, there are four that are in production at the moment, like the Baroque Garden, which looks amazing in the picture that they're, that they're developing. And uh, thank you for those songs. Uh, Natalie's probably uh, gone. She was saying um, that song, Brother, Let Me Be Your Servant. It's about 40 years old, isn't it? Written here in New Zealand. Beautiful song. Uh, she said, it's so old, it's new, you know. And perhaps not as old as some of the songs that um, John enjoys singing. <laughs> They're a bit older than that. So 40 years seems old to some people, but maybe to others, not so much. But wonderful to sing that. And obviously that fits, with, fits in with our, our theme today very well. So uh, full marks for being very thematic there. Um, wait for Kindle to come up to life. So not quite 40 years ago, but 20 years ago, CGI began replacing a normal flat cartoon um, animation in our movies, a bit more than probably 25 years ago when Toy Story came out. The two-dimensional drawings uh, made famous particularly by Disney with their um, uh, Steamboat Willie, was it? And then the gorgeous full-color Snow White and all the many thousands of cartoons um, after that really were no match for the depth, realism and detail of the new, more three-dimensional technology. From early efforts like Jurassic Park and Toy Story to the sophisticated Avatar and Lord of the Rings, which uh, New Zealand can quite uh, rightly be proud of, uh, of Weta Digital's efforts there, we realised that if you've got enough money and skill, then you could actually put any story you like on the screen. There is now no limit, is there, to the imagination of, uh, really the imagination is, is the only limit. So, but good CGI is only part of it, isn't it? Uh, really, was it really necessary to redo the Aladdin movie or the Lion King movie, as good as they were? I haven't seen Aladdin yet because people said it was not good, but uh, <laughs> talk to me after that. Uh, I'm sure Will Smith did his best, but uh, hard to beat Robin Williams in the uh, early 90s version. But uh, they were much loved because Aladdin and Lion King were great stories, weren't they? So CGI is fantastic, but a good story is possibly even better. You know what? We have the best story to tell. The good news about Jesus the Messiah. Amen? Amen. 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 By the way, can I say hello to Lindley back there? I meant to say hello. I have so many thoughts when I stand up on stage. I wanted to see Lindley and Naomi. <laughs> Go and smother them later. <laughs> uh, so this series is based on a simple assertion. The transformational gospel plus a vivid 3D portrayal is a powerful combination. It doesn't guarantee results. They are up to the work of the Spirit and indeed the choice of the human being, but a 3D witness can be the best way to tell the best story. This year we've had a few Ds, haven't we? Hopefully you've recognised D as a bit of a theme in some of our um, things. We've had 7D, 
2D and we've had 1D, so now I'm adding 3D to it. You know, I'll be looking for 4 and 5. 7D, what is 7D? Introduced at our church camp way back before, <laughs> as the world was just about to go crazy. And we looked at uh, 7Ds, true life, shared life, pure life, deep life, full life, serving life, and bold life. And these were a way of looking at the Christian life um, in different ways, habits and uh, ideas that are vital to our, to our um, understanding and our growth as Christians. 2D is two or three disciples meeting regularly to encourage each other in the Word, in their walk with Christ, and also their witness for Christ. And then 1D is having a goal of raising our personal evangelistic temperature, which we'll talk about in a couple of weeks, um, by one degree, by one degree. So that's 7D, 2D, 1D. So what then is 3D? 3D is the simply develop friendships, discover stories, and discern next steps. I have plundered uh, from all sorts of sources uh, for these ideas, but the outline has come from the very helpful book, Just Walk Across the Room by Bill Hybels, where he outlines the, he probably would not recognize almost any of what I put under those points, but I love his outline. So over the next few weeks, we're going to do this. We're going to look at discover stories today, and then we're going to look at discern next steps. And then Rob will take us back to the first point of <laughs> developing friendships, and I'll uh, do whatever he doesn't do on that. And then we will conclude uh, Howard Webb, who has just produced his book. I was at the book launch on Thursday, Redemptive Family. What a fantastic book. My wife, of course, is reading it halfway through already. Uh, I will read it. Um, but she's a great uh, source of, um, of book reviews for me. And Howard will take us through Redemptive Family again, which includes all these three points beautifully. So uh, Michelle read from us, first of all, from 1 John 3. Verse 18, Dear children, let us not love with words or speech, but with actions and with truth and in truth. Actions speak louder than words, don't they? And, and many a politician has found this uh, when their words and actions haven't always matched up. But notice there is truth there as well. There is truth there in that verse. And that's what being a 3D witness is all about. As Jesus demonstrates in the Acts 10, 38, where P Peter is preaching the gospel to Cornelius in his household, he says this, Jesus of Nazareth went around doing good and healing all who were under the power of the devil. So what was Jesus doing? He was doing good and he was healing those under the power of the devil. What about preaching? Well, a few verses earlier, verse 36, God announced the good news of peace through Jesus Christ. Verse 42 he commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one whom God appointed as judge of the living and the dead. So in these verses we have three key things, don't we? We have word, sign, and deed. They're in the ministry of Jesus. And indeed, a 3D witnesses pra practices all we need 3D witness practices all these things as well. And as I scribbled down this definition, I realized I missed half of it out, so I'm going to try and add a couple of things in. And on your notes from the sermon, if you get the email at 12 and if you don't talk to me, um, I've added the correct definition. So it should be a 3D witness gets to know people, goes beyond the surface level, uh, seeks to help them in a practical way, there's the deeds one, um, learns about that person's life, shares something of their life too, of my life, and is sensitive to the Holy Spirit for opportunities to pray with them or for them, to invite them to think, things and talk about their faith. So I've expanded that a little bit from that definition. So hopefully it includes word, sign, and deed. So today, I will assume that you're already talking to someone that you know fairly well. Uh, partly because I want Rob, Rob to introduce the Developed Friendships one, and we're doing that in a couple of weeks, uh, while I'm away singing in Narawahia at my unconvention. So we'll jump to step two, which is discover stories. And uh, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna hand out, in fact, I'm gonna get Ken to hand these out to you. Um, the booklets and uh, a pen if you need them. 
and we have the uh, not only our pens but all the pens from the election. I don't know if you saw in the, in the side swipe that uh, people have been putting them online and joking about uh, the pen, how uh, they only put a certain amount of ink in them, so I don't know if they'll ask the distance, but we'll see. Um, So what I want you to do, uh, make sure you get a pen and, uh, and the, the booklet and write your name on the top. Because if you're anything like me, you will forget to bring it next week. So I'm going to get you all to hand them back in at the end. Celia <laughs> probably won't forget to, to bring it back, but most of the rest of us will. <laughs> However, if you really want to take it home, that of course is fine. Just bring it back. So I'm going to bring them all back from you, but uh, with, the, with the wonderful idea of putting your name here, we can give you your copy, uh, so you can scribble away to your heart's content, um, even if you want to do doodles, that's fine, we won't be looking at them, and then hand them out to you next week, and all the week after. So turn to page 7. I'm going to go straight to Discover Stories, page 7 of the book. In John 3 and 4, Jesus encounters two radically different people. Who does he talk to in John 3? Nicodemus, a religious man, cultured, powerful, educated, influential, and so on. And in chapter 4, the opposite. A, a woman, an outcast, cows, thirsty, literally, and also spiritually. A Samaritan woman. I mean, gosh, is this working? Yes, it is. That worked well when I tuned down. Okay. Maybe I'm just yelling if you turn me down. That's fine, too. Um, and Kevin Hardy, author of Organic Outreach, who came up with the One Degree Rule, points out some helpful principles. So I just want to look at those with you from these uh, chapters. So, as Jesus talked to Nicodemus and the woman at the well, he talked about what was on their minds, didn't he? Nicodemus asked him a question. He was interested in who Jesus was. The woman was interested in water. She was at a well. She was also curious. Why did a Jewish rabbi ask her, a Samaritan woman, for a drink? So, in the same way, we too should take time to talk to people about what is on their minds, what is on their hearts, what they're interested in. in. And so the first principle there is talk life. Talk life. And life might be rugby, gardening, job, kids, weather, whatever. Talk life. Hopefully you get beyond weather soon, although that's always fascinating to most of us. Secondly, Jesus wanted Nicodemus to be born again and freed from that empty religion and experience a vital relationship with God. And for religious people, uh, this is very often what they need to really realize it's not just about going to church or reading the Bible or saying prayers or joining the study groups, but it's a vital relationship with God. And Jesus understands. No, he already knows that Nicodemus needs this. Often we don't always know what people need straight away. And he wanted the woman to drink living water that would quench her soul for the rest of her life and for eternity. <coughs> so in the same way, all of our outreach must be driven by a love for God and for the people who need to know this amazing grace. So because of our love for people, as we're talking with them, we're thinking, they need to know God. They need to know God's love. And if I love them, I want them to know that too. So that principle, of course, is love. Love is the second one there, so jot that down, love. Nicodemus and the woman had questions, and Jesus not only listened, he heard them. As we help people move toward God, we need to listen, invite questions, and really hear what people are wondering about. We're going to look at a little bit at this today, and we're going to have a little demonstration. And if there's time, which I hope there is, you'll have a little practice. Um, so the principle here is... What is the principle? Listen, thank you. Listen. The next one, the master looked at, look at, looked at Nicodemus and, and asked, You are Israel's teacher and do not understand these things? Ouch! The last thing a religious teacher wants to hear is, You don't get it. Ever tried to say that to, a, to your lecturer? You just don't get it. Um, and of course, 
Jesus gently asked the woman, can I meet your husband? That, I find that funny. This is Kevin Harney's words, but we all know Jesus says, go call your husband and come back. You know, He doesn't quite so gently, can I meet your husband? But it's very similar. But in both cases, the hard questions, it moved the conversation forward and deeper because they were getting more closer to the bone, if you know what I mean, more personal, more tricky, maybe for the person, more risky for Jesus, um, but he didn't mind taking risks. So be willing to ask tough questions, but do it with a gentle heart. So here is the principle, ask the hard or tough questions um, gently but uh, really can move the conversation along quite rapidly from this level to all this level with a good, uh, more challenging question. The next one, Jesus told Nicodemus that unless he was born again, he would not see the kingdom of heaven, as we've talked about. He told the woman that she would never have her thirst quenched until she came to the source of living water. We need to gently but clearly speak the truth. So the principle here is to speak the hard truth. I think... Kevin is quite a gung-ho guy. I've met him, a wonderful guy, and he likes hard stuff. <laughs> but speak the hard truth or speak the real truth, speak the honest truth, whatever you want to put in there. And then finally here, Nicodemus uh, thought that he needed theological clarity and more information about Jesus. This was true to a degree, but what he really needed was to be born again. The woman came believing she needed water, that was true, but she was satisfied with water for a day, and Jesus wanted to give her water for eternity. I would get like that. So as we learn about people's felt needs, we should see the real needs that Jesus wants to meet. So here's the principle here. See the felt need and address the real need. See the felt need, which in this case was water or theological clarity, and um, address the real need. Back in the 90s when I was working um, in uh, student ministry, uh, we used the felt need topic, how to get better grades and have more fun. And we had this book that we gave to students and they filled in a form, student lifestyle, and uh, then we called them up and some of them turned up to receive their free book. And as we shared the principle briefly with them um, during a free break in, their cl in between classes, we also asked if it was possible if we could share um, basically the gospel, the story of, of um, the ultimate answer to having fun that really lasts, if you like, real fun. And, uh, you know, that was a good opportunity to go from a felt need to a really somewhat programmatic. We don't normally do that sort of thing in life, but it, it was a good um, example of that. I was actually very privileged um, when I was in California. I was at a UC Irvine. Anyone heard of UC Irvine? It's in Orange County. I'm sure you've heard of Orange County. Part of LA, the massive uh, Los Angeles area. And we had the author of the book um, giving the talk. And then people came and filled in cards and we followed them up. And I met a Korean guy and shared all this with him. And he accepted the Lord. And he, I was back in New Zealand and he made contact with me and shared how he was going. And that was just a delight. I think he wrote this, these things people used to write back in the day called letters <laughs> and posted it to me. Pre-email. So that was delightful. Going from felt need to real need. So how can we apply these interactions that we've looked at with Jesus and Nicodemus and the woman at the well? The key thing to do is to ask questions and see where the conversation goes. Michelle read from us from Colossians 2, and verse 6 tells us, Let your conversation be always full of grace, seasoned with salt, so that you may know how to answer everyone. I love that idea of, of being seasoned with salt. What, do, what does salt do? It makes you thirsty. So uh, it, it creates a, a, a hunger or to, to have a drink of water, possibly, or a thirst. Uh, so we look at successful conversations, point B in your notes there. Some folk believe that a faith conversation has been unsuccessful unless the plan of salvation has been clearly explained. But Jesus reminds the disciples that it's not a one-shot deal. Most of the time, it is a process. Most people, we don't need to get everything out in the first you know, conversation because we may never see them again, or sometimes that's the case. At the end of his discussion with the woman at the well, and the disciples come back in 
John 4.31. Meanwhile, his disciples urged him, Rabbi, eat something. But he said to them, I have food to eat that you know nothing about. Then his disciples said to each other, Could someone have brought him food? As usual, the disciples are a little bit slow on the uptake here. My food, said Jesus, is to do the will of him who sent me and finish his work. Don't you have a saying, it's still four months until the harvest? I tell you, open your eyes and look at the fields. They are ripe for harvest. Even now the one who reaps draws a wage and harvests a crop for eternal life, so that the sower and the reaper may be glad together. Thus the saying, one sows and another reaps is true. I sent you to reap what you have not worked for. Others have done the hard work and you have reaped the benefits of their labor. So what Jesus is saying here, that we have come, and these Samaritans are open, but others, you know, from um, Jacob onwards have done the hard work of, of sharing the message, and we're coming to um, kind of uh, harvest the crop, as it were. There's the sower, and there's the reaper. There's a process of um, maturation, if you like. So one way of looking at it is the faith scale. This probably was first popularized by Engels with the Engels scale, and this is a version of it, probably from Bill Hybels. And we see here kind of a scale of a person's growing faith. Uh, so you might have atheist, someone who doesn't believe in God, then God acknowledger, obviously someone who acknowledges God's existence, a, a, a seeker, an active seeker after truth, and then you've got in the middle there, conversion. And then in the Christian side, follower, owner, and reproducer. Now, owner doesn't mean you finally own property in the Auckland housing market, great as that might be. But owner means that you are like a church member, or a disciple, or someone who is uh, serving, or, uh, or committing more, uh, giving, uh, tithing, whatever. So a sense of, um, I'm, not just, uh, I'm not just showing up. A little bit more than that. And a reproducer, of course, sharing their own faith with others. So people are at different points along this faith scale, aren't they? Our job is to encourage them to take the next step. As we listen to the Spirit's promptings, uh, this gets easier with practice. In the uh, questions for this uh, uh, sermon, I, I, I ask, uh, is there someone that you might know that you... Uh, and where might they be on this chart, on the scale? And what could you do to nudge them along in the scale? Realising that it's in partnership with the Holy Spirit. He is the one moving people closer to God. Okay, so that's uh, looking at the idea of success. What is success? It's simply being available, really, isn't it? To share whatever we do at, at whatever stage people are at. C, getting to know people. How do we develop deep in our relationship with others? We ask questions. We ask questions. Here are some basic ones. Where did you grow up? Where have you lived? What was your family background like? What is your current family situation? Married, single, children, etc. Um, one good question might be, who is in your household? It's a little less kind of judgy, you know what I'm saying? Um, are you married? Maybe you don't want to ask that in many cases. You just want to say, so who's in your household? That's a lovely general question. Who's in your whanau? Or something like that. Where do you work? Rather than where do you work, you might say, what do you do with your time? Because some people can't work, don't work. What's work? <laughs> Whatever. Finished work. That's fine. Um, what do you do with your time? Uh, what do you like about And of course you can follow up with that. And then what do you do for fun? Or something like that. As you build trust with people, you can ask perhaps a non-threatening question about their beliefs, and there's a couple of good questions there in the next slide. Thanks, guys. Um, next slide. So I'd be interested in hearing about your spiritual journey, or may I ask you about your religious background. I'd like to hear where you are on your journey toward God. Let's face it, those are fairly, um, uh, those are more personal things, particularly in our culture. I think we've convinced ourselves that you don't talk about, uh, what is it, religion well, uh, or politics or sex. Maybe those are the three things we don't talk about. But it seems to me we've been talking about politics for the last, I don't know how long. So we might as well talk about religion. I'll leave you to talk about sex. <laughs> and some good follow-up questions that you could ask there. 
Now, I find for me, um, once people know I'm a pastor, it's always in their mind. I'm talking to Andrew Cox, he's a pastor. <laughs> it's always there. And so it comes up. You know, someone was talking to me the other day. And so it has the congregation, or whatever. And it's very easy for me to say, ACPC, great church, love, love the food, wonderful. We're moving. <laughs> By the way, we're moving. That's exciting. So there's lots of great things I can talk about. But, you know, there's an opportunity then for me to then do what? Ask them about their religious. Have they got any religious background? Um, any, any faith connection? Where are they at on the journey? So an opportunity for me to go to the next step. But I do have to kind of make that choice. Otherwise, I can rave on about the one, wonders of ACPC to my heart's content. But, you know, there's an opportunity there. I'm sure we all have those opportunities, don't we? Yes, nod, you do. But whether we take them is the key. Uh, D, principles for good listening. We're just going to uh, rattle through here and then I'm going to uh, um, model something for you. First of one is tune in. Look at the person. Show visual and verbal approval. A hundred years ago, I did this course called Micro Skills. Micro counseling, it was. Micro skills. Looking at these kind of things, they also included paraphrasing. You know, repeating, not necessarily verbatim, but sometimes pretty close to it, what the other person has said, so that you show that you've understood them. So you've, you're, you fell off a horse. Tell me about it, or whatever. Um, and trying to avoid talking about yourself. This is the great challenge with tuning in. You don't suddenly go, well, that reminds me of my horse riding days, etc. <laughs> Forget your horse riding days. We want to tune in and listen to the other person. Use conversation expanders. You know, the most powerful words in the English language almost are who, what, where, when, why, and how. <laughs> Five W's and an H, as uh, precepts will tell you, will call, cause them. K after calls them. So, wonderful questions just to expand things out. So, for example, they might say, I'm into archery. Archery, fascinating. Archery, I know nothing about archery, but that's okay. <laughs> Where do you practice archery? Maybe I've seen some things over at uh, One Tree Hill. Do you do, you, you do archery over there? Um, who got you in? How did you get into archery? Uh, why why do you do archery? But why is often a little bit more sort of pointed, isn't it? But to be used. Sometimes we use why, say why in a different way. So use what as a fake why question. So what what about archery intrigues you or something? You know what I'm saying? That's a little bit better. Why? Why? Must you do this? Okay. Um, where are we? Find common ground, not your pet hobby horse. I, I'm guilty. I'm guilty. We're talking, talking. I find something, I latch onto it. Wow. I want to, you know, you're talking about, I don't know, Lord of the Rings. Yay, I'm going to talk about all what I know about women. No. I want to tune into them. So I think, wow, well, he's sporty. I hate sport. But I'm interested maybe in health and fitness. Say, say, <laughs> hypothetically. So there might be some common ground there. Or I watch the Bledisloe Cup, hypothetically, and then I could talk about. So there's some common ground that we can find, possibly, even if I had sport. You know what I'm saying? Um, pick up on the big issues. What are their dreams, concerns, needs? I love this because they're actually not that hard to ask. <clears throat> Once you've talked through it, to ask someone, so what, what, are, your, what are your hopes? You know, 2020, crap year. What are your hopes for 2021? <laughs> 2031, you can really push it out, push the ball right down the other end and, and ask them that. And then ask wondering questions, wondering questions. A set of three questions which go progressively deeper. And there's 99 of them that I've put the link on today's email. And I just changed the kind of evil and suffering questions to 2020. So how has 2020 affected the way you look at life? Two, what conclusions have you drawn about the nature of humanity? Three, do you believe there's a solution to the problems of racism, injustice, sexual abuse, and even pandemics? <laughs> so obviously I've gone quite deep in that third question because that's a what is the solution to evil question, and of course we have the solution, but we don't necessarily rush in with that. Um, but that's a way perhaps of make, getting uh, moving the conversation along. Wondering questions, as it says there, are non-threatening, communicate humility, allow people to discover truth for themselves. So um, we're not wanting to be manipulative here, but can really open up the conversation. So I have um, uh, found a volunteer in Rob Fong, and he and I are going to model something for you. So we'll grab a couple of chairs. And, uh, <coughs> Oh, 
take a seat. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's an invitation. Ah, so willing. So, uh, how do we know each other well? Um, through ACPC. ACPC, maybe something more hypothetical than that. Say we work together or we've met up oh, at okay. uh, something like that, maybe table tennis. Yeah, yes, it's um, the table tennis meetup group. Table tennis, right. Okay, lovely. Um, so, that was a good game, Rob. You're just really improving. Yeah, I'm not at your level yet, but uh, I'm getting there. <laughs> Great, thank you. So, hey Rob, great to catch up for coffee. It's, uh, it's fun, isn't it? Because often you just don't get to chat much of these things, because uh, you know how it is. Yeah, that's good. Good to set time out in a different environment as well. I know, isn't it nice here, isn't yeah. it? But you love that palm tree. Yes. At least we've got water that I can I think so, I think so, yeah, yeah. Now, I could easily go and talk about the weather now, but I won't. Back to tuning in. So, Rob, um, so where are, you, where are you from? Are you from Auckland? Or? Yeah, yeah, I'm born and bred in Auckland. Yes, yeah. Yeah. Oh, the North Shore. The, um, the North Shore, the, the tropical North Shore. Oh, wow, it is. <laughs> climate, you know, what do they call it? Microclimate there? It is, yes, yes. Oh. Yeah. Especially over so I could actually have down. <laughs> <laughs> I could argue with them on that one, but I was zero again. Ah, uh, oh, that's cool. So, what's your uh, family family background? Did, yeah, um, so parents, uh, well, my mum was born in Auckland and my dad was born in Fiji, actually. Fiji? Yes, wow. yes. So how did they meet? Uh, in Auckland, so my dad, he migrated to New Zealand in the 60s, I think, and then I think my mum's mum introduced them, because he, well, yeah, so I, I don't, I think... It wasn't an arranged marriage, was it? No. <laughs> well, well, I guess, well, he, no, she had just introduced them, so. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah, so who's, um... We'll skip the family stuff now. Um, so what do you do with your time? So, um, yeah, I've got a few hobbies. Like I enjoy, do like lots of sports. Yeah, so right, right. Into sports. Yeah. Fantastic. Any particular ones? Uh, uh, I like riding my bike. Mm. Yeah, I like mountain yeah. biking. Nice. Uh, do you go out to um, Woodhill? Woodhill, yes. <laughs> yes <that's laughs> yeah, so I do that occasionally. Yeah. Yeah. But in, in, anything outdoors I like, actually. Yeah, so, I like the so this time of year, it's yes. going to be great, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, like outdoors. Outdoors. So, yeah. You like in the beach? Ah, in the, in the beach, yeah, I'm not a very good swimmer though. So I just, I just wait. <laughs> wait. That's fine. Yeah. Do you ever do any surfing or body surfing? Uh, no, uh, body surfing. Yes, yeah. but not. I'd like to be able to surf, but I'm not. Uh, any, uh, what about um, my kayaking? Or uh, I have given them a go, but not, I wouldn't say, yeah, I'm not a competent or. Yeah. That's good. And what about for a job? Do you have a, do you have a job? I do. I do just ask job. Yeah. <laughs> the exciting world of IT. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's such it's a big it's area. <laughs> yeah. Is there, can you explain it in a way that makes any sense to me who's not an IT? Yeah, yeah well, we um, build business software. So if a business has a requirement, yeah. and they have, so we, we work with the software package, and the, the software doesn't meet their requirements, we kind of build custom solutions. Yeah. Um, so to make, make and, and, and do you enjoy that? Um, Half, half the time. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably good that you're yeah. probably just hanging in there, you yeah. know, you're yeah. allowed to keep staying. Yeah. I don't wake up not wanting to go to work. So That's good. That's good. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. 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 Oh, okay. Have you got any sort of goals, things you'd like to do in the future? Um, I guess, yeah, I, I probably do, but there's nothing really, I'd like to probably give more back, I think. Rather. <coughs> I mean, work is really sound focused, I guess. Like, there's a lot of giving to the business, but in terms of outside of it, yeah, that would be nice. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, nothing specific. We need to work on a plan. Yeah, sure. Yeah. And, and, you know, if you're not stressed about it, that's fine. Yeah. And, yeah. 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 That's great. Obviously, you've come along to the table tennis, which is Yeah, fantastic. it's great. So, and, yeah. and, and Darren, the organisers here, I see. Superb guys. Superb guys. Yeah. Superb guys. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> um, obviously, we're in a church here. Have you had a connection with church before? Um, before for ACPC, you mean? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yes, we did. Well, as kids, we used to go to a midnight mass a lot at the local Catholic church. Yeah. Actually. yeah, so that was um, one of my first recollections of church, which was being a midnight mass on pre primary school. Wow, yeah, yes. so as a young kid, that would have been um, fairly. Uh, yeah. um, an experience. It was. And the fun thing was like you got to sit to midnight. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's a good thing about midnight. Yeah. 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 And I recall that when looking forward to staying up that late. Yeah. So. Wonderful. I will leave it there, but we could keep going, um, exploring more. But um, give give more.
That's good. So um, we do have a little bit of time. So I'm going to ask you to find someone you don't know super well. Okay, so perhaps not your husband or wife. <laughs> and just go through some of those questions. Um, uh, we're from family, uh, job, um, fun, and future. That's pretty, pretty much all we have time for. If you want to keep talking, you can talk after one and two, which is great. So find someone you don't know. We'll stand up. Go mixy. Mixy, mixy, <laughs> and uh, I'll give you about uh, six minutes for that. What was that, sorry? <laughs>
Okay, thanks everyone for the but it sounds like it's like some good conversations happening. Did anyone try doing some of the what we have been trying to follow Yeah, you know, sometimes it's natural, we're used to that, other times we have to practice using those follow up questions. And did anyone um, ask a question like, what are your dreams and hopes for things in your future? Not quite. That's a little bit. <laughs> Wonderful question though, because it can open up quite a personal sharing with maybe a colleague, friend, um, or whatever. Probably a fellow hobby member. Um, we won't do the last section now, but I, you will be able to read that when I eventually give you back the booklets on getting permission. Wonderful idea, which I really believe is important. We get permission from people. It doesn't mean we, we're really timid, but it means that we don't overstep the mark. We, we're kind of cooperating with them in the spirit in the conversation. So um, next week we're going to look at um, discerning next steps. And it's going to be really fantastic, so I hope you can enjoy, uh, join us next week. Um, and uh, we'll see, where, as you see where things are going, it's kind of just being a, discerning what the next step is. God is in charge. He is the one doing the works. Paul says in 1 Corinthians 3, 6, I planted the seed, Apollos watered it, but God has been making it grow. So, um, yeah, if we could get the booklets back um, at the end, that would be great. And the pens. Um, but if you really want to take it with you, that's fine too. Just remember to bring it back with you. So I hope we'll be encouraged as we uh, look at what it means to be a 3D witness. Um, fitting our own personality and uh, working with others to really shine brightly for Jesus. And so um, enjoy. Thanks, team. I will uh, hand over to you for our final song.
big to see everybody. Uh, well, before we conclude the service, I'd just like to highlight a few announcements. Um, just got a copy of the, the guide. Um, on the inside, page a couple of things. Uh, well, sandwich things as usual, but the reminder that the church lunch is in a, a few weeks' time. Uh, next week, we will uh, provide more details and all the details on that. All you need to know. Um, and on the back is the calendar as well with um, the various events listed there. Are there any other announcements for this morning? Okay, if not, I'll invite Andrew up to give the benediction. Actually, I did remember um, I mentioned on the Thursday email The Way of the Raukura, which is the um, musical about Harihaka which is a wonderful New Zealand story with a very, very strong Christian message. And of course, uh, this is the time of year, early November, when um, we remember what happened at Parihaka. And if you don't know what happened, great opportunity from the 30th of October to the 7th of November at Mount Albert Baptist. Um, and I'll um, put another link on this Thursday. I'm hoping to go um, Thursday week to it. So if you want to join me, and go to that musical, then that would be great. I've mentioned to a couple of people, so hopefully we can have a group. Um, and I've got some friends, you probably, you probably all know people who are in it, that's the beauty of these things. Uh, so do continue those conversations, not only with each other, but maybe this week. Um, you feel like there's an opportunity to go a little bit further with someone who has been more of an acquaintance. So I'd encourage you to, to be open to the Spirit this week in those conversations. So let's stand together. This is taken from 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 10. May the God of peace, who called you to his eternal glory in Christ, after you have suffered a little while, himself restore you and make you strong, firm, and steadfast. To him be the power forever and ever. Amen. Amen. God bless everyone.